We are here with Javon Melton, who is the representative for House District 41. He is a Democrat. Thank you so much for being here with us yeah, today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate Great. it. Great. If you were talking to a millennial mm. voter mm -hmm. who felt frustrated um, and disenchanted with the political system and was frustrated with the two-party system and how much partisanship there is. And get involved at the local level. Um, so much emphasis and so much attention is brought at the national level, and you do see gridlock in Congress um, because they're playing political football. My first year, Congress passed 41 bills. We passed 670 bills that year. Wow. So that tells you how much more we're able to do. And that's with a split chamber. It is a tough system to work in, but there is common ground. There is lots of great things being done. Really get involved in your city councils, get involved in your state legislatures, and really see what it's like, and not just watch, you know, CNN or Fox or MSNBC. Really get involved and get your hands in it, and you'll you'll fall in love. A day in the life is really uh, going down to the Capitol, sitting in uh, on the House floor, where we uh, first debate bills, mm -hmm. uh, and then we typically do our third reading vote, and then in the afternoons we spend most of the time uh, in committee, listening to the constituents, hearing the concerns uh, here in House District 41. Yep. It's a really diverse district. It's actually geographically the smallest district wow. in Colorado. But we uh, base our uh, districts based on uh, population. Yep. So we have the same size as everyone else, so that just means it's very dense. You are also the deputy majority whip. It's my job to work with our whip and the rest of our caucus to make sure that we have the votes as Democrats to get something passed or not get something passed. Mm -hmm. I have to have a personal relationship with all of the members on the floor, not just Democrats, but Republicans too. Yeah. Because sometimes if I don't have enough Democrats, I have to reach across the aisle. Lots of times I live in that world where right meets left. It's really just understanding that uh, member where their district is and if there's some commonality. This is gonna help your constituents, it's gonna help my constituents. Do you think we can get on board on this? And we may have to do some tweaking to the bill, but that's kind of how we, we work, increasing the jobs here in the district, uh, making sure that transportation is available to people that go outside of the district into downtown, probably run about, about 15 to 20 bills a year. Okay. And about five of those a year come directly from the district. So mm -hmm. come from constituents. Most of the time, those are the ones that get passed, are the ones that come from the constituents. So that's, awesome. that's why it's important. As it should be. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's why it's important that I don't just check out in May. Do you have any ideas for um, some bipartisan option that has conceivable uh, capacity to pass in Denver that can help people um, get more affordable medical care. I think we were on that road actually uh, before um, the ACA, before the Affordable Health Care Act. Mm -hmm. um, we were actually the first one to create a market exchange. Um, actually, that got taken from Colorado. We were the model. Mm -hmm. And that was actually introduced by a Republican. I do support a universal health care plan. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's done on a federal level, great. But until then, we've got to find solutions here in Colorado. And I think that if we can include the free market uh, in a way that uh, allows for uh, businesses uh, to still make a profit and allows for consumers to really get a value, um, then that's a win-win where, again, right meets left. This is the first time in Colorado's history that we have eight African-American serving wow. in the legislature, which is incredible to be a part of. We really do try to make sure that we're working together and that we're thinking outside the box and that we're taking advantage of some opportunities that our predecessors didn't have because yeah. they didn't have the same numbers. Yeah. Um, what sort of things have you guys been working on in session to try and support the immigrant community's interests? I have supported making sure that you know, we're not detaining people in our jails and taxing our taxpayers uh, for uh, something that the, the federal government should be doing. We started out in such different places, but then we're able to come together and find common ground. Uh, those always are the victories that feel the best. Definitely. Not the ones that you can just speed right through, but the ones that really take some you know, negotiation and work and sweat yep. and grit yep. um, to get done. So I'm really Dirty happy. hands. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> can you give us a couple of specific ways that you feel like you've supported um, women identifying folks either as a representative or in your community? We have brought the Equal Pay Bill to Colorado a couple of times, and I'm a staunch supporter of that. Um, it's so important that women are paid uh, the same amount uh, for the equal work, equal pay uh, as men uh, are. I had a single mom that mm -hmm. had to work three jobs at times to make ends meet. So yeah. I know that you know she wasn't paid her value. I also think it's important that women control their health uh, options, even beyond just child or pregnancy, but just all of their options in terms of mammograms and early detection and things like that. I want to make sure that uh, those options are there. We need to uh, do things to really encourage our, our, our girls mm -hmm. to learn about math and science because. 
you know, it was, it was women that got us to the moon. When it comes to diversity, and uh, I think we should celebrate that, at the same time, we also have to make sure that everyone's voices are being heard, that everyone's values are being respected. What's the most contentious argument you've ever gotten with a Republican constituent or colleague? I told him, I'm coming down, I gotta speak on this bill. He's like, go for it. And so I went down and I just brought hell and fire and, you know, just slammed the, the, the dais and just went off. Uh -huh. And I expected him to fire right back, but he didn't. Afterwards, I, I went to him, I said, you could have really eaten my lunch on that. He was like, I know. But he was, <laughs> he was like, but I knew you were passionate about it. I wanted you to let, uh, you know, let your voice be heard. And I really appreciate it. I'm just going to do a couple of like rapid fire pop Bring culture on. questions. I'm here, I'm ready. What was the last TV show you binge watched? Black Mirror. Mm. Oh my God. So good. Yes. Favorite place in Colorado. <laughs> Besides House Digit 45? Yes, 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 yes. Well, I'm going to actually go to my neighbors to the south and say Gardens of the Gods. All right. Love it. Rockies, Broncos, or Avalanche? Rockies. Okay. Love baseball. Favorite politician, alive or dead? I would probably say Bill Clinton because he was the one who inspired me to to start learning about politics. I just became enthralled with it, and ever since then, I've been a political junkie. Right, well, mm. it was such a pleasure talking to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for sitting here with us. I appreciate us. it. I appreciate it. This is fun.